Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a tool tip I am extremely excited about. Also, by the way, you might notice that this video is not being shot on a phone. No, a real camera is now filming me. Oh, post-COVID, starting to happen. It's happening slowly. Okay. This is my vacuum former, and I've covered this on the channel before. This is my home-built 12 by 16 inch vacuum former that I built about 20 plus years ago while Fawn Davis and I were first putting together our little shops in the Mission and uh, uh, the Excelsior of San Francisco. And it's a great machine, but it took me a while to put together, it requires some expertise, and I had to do it that way because the, the vacuum form machine I was copying to make this is both insanely rare and when you can find it, it's often well over a thousand bucks still. Um, the fact is small, discreet, reasonably sized vacuum forming machines are still quite an expensive piece of kit for a new model maker. The reason I am having this tool tip right now is not to encourage you to build your own vacuum form machine, which you totally should do, and you should check out our other video, which will be linked to in the comments below, and you can build your own. But if you don't want to, there is finally a much less expensive solution, and I'm psyched about it. I did a bunch of reading online as to what people were doing for vacuum forming, and I found a lot of reviews of this that spoke quite highly of it. This is a vacuum forming machine made for dentists, for vacuum forming trays for your palates and things, for your teeth. That's why it's a discreet five by five inch bed here. It's a very small machine, but it rings in at 100, 120 bucks. That's crazy cheap for a vacuum forming machine. So I was like, let's get one, let's try it out. Let's see how it does and the results are pretty spectacular. Um, I've got a couple of pieces here of a build I'm working on, and they're great example pieces of the kind of things vacuum forming is really great for. Um, they, are, uh, they have a flat side, which is ideal for vacuum forming. So you have it, basically, it's, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. In case you don't know what vacuum forming is, it is a process where you take a, a sheet of thermal plastic, in this case styrene, you put it in a frame and underneath a heating element, which softens the plastic. And then you pull that plastic down over a form and pull a vacuum. And when you pull a vacuum, there it is. It sucks that hot plastic around the form, making a replica of that form. Um, you experience uh, vacuum forming every day, you deal with a blister package. That's how those are made using the vacuum forming process. Um, you can vacuum form rounder objects. This would be possible to vacuum form, but you'd have to cut it in half and add a draft to it. And then once you vacuum form both halves, you cut them on the halfway point and then glue them together, often with a lip. That is more advanced vacuum form technique, it's not what we're here to talk about. I'm just here to run this through its paces. And I've got a sheet of 30 thousandths, 40 thousandths, and 60 thousandths styrene. And I'm really curious how these are gonna work for these two forms. Um, they both have fairly uh, a fairly significant uh, draft. Like there's a, a lot of pull. So there's a lot of work to do for the plastic. I know it works for the 30 thousandths because that's the one I tested. I'm curious about the other two. So. Um, here's how these work. Uh, the heating element is in here, the vacuum's down here, and you take a piece of your plastic and you clamp it in. Clamped. Now this is something I really dig about this machine is it's roughly five by five inches, but you could do, you could actually fit a six by six inch piece of styrene in here and it'll work just fine. Um, Oftentimes vacuum forming frames can be really precise and specific and you like have to get it right, otherwise you don't get the vacuum you want. It's just a pain in the ass. This is much, much easier. The element swings in and swings out, which I also think is pretty great. And the, um, the frame holder has two positions. There's one right close to the heating element and then there's one about an inch down. And I've actually been finding it works way better when I have it an inch down. Um, up here, this heating element is too hot. It actually starts to roast the plastic even before it gets to the right uh, tensile, uh, what do you call it, the right softness. Okay, I feel like I've been talking a mile a minute. I'm sorry, I'm excited. That's what's happening is I just like, I, I'm so 
psyched to find such an important tool at such a reasonable price. So here are the forms we're going to vacuform. This little hexagon and this little ribbed tube thing. We put our 30 thousandths plastic in there. We clamp it, we turn on the heating element, swing it in, and bring this up to first position. It takes a while to heat up the first time. Sometimes five, six minutes, but once it's warm, cycling is faster. It's a little warm right now. Um, I know that five inches by five inches might not seem like a large enough vacuum form bed for you, but most, if you're doing model making specifically like spaceships and, and tanks and garbage trucks and other things in, in let's say train scales or model scales, this is an ideal size. You One thing I can't stand is when I have to vacuum form something this big and I gotta pull this out and waste a 12 by 16 piece of plastic to get this tiny little shell. This is perfect for those smaller jobs. Plus it cycles really quickly. I, I, I think this is gonna get a lot of play here. Um, I have noticed that as the heating element heats up, the, the top of this gets like, cook your tea hot. Like it's, you could cook with this thing. Um, so I may end up adding some kind of handle to be able to sort of put this away without, uh, without burning myself. All right. Like every vacuum former, as it heats up, the plastic bows up for a second before settling down and starting to droop. Um, the rule of thumb for vacuum formers is you often want them to droop about as far as your buck is high. Um, but with this one, the vacuum is so powerful, I'm actually pulling it down a little bit earlier than that. Now that may change with the 40 and 60 thousandths, but for the 30 thou, this heating element is so efficient, it gets that plastic real soft. Um, I don't mean for this video to be a comprehensive video about vacuum forming. But I will tell you, if you have difficulty with the plastic conforming all over the part that you're forming, um, you can dust it with cornstarch and that will provide, uh, hopefully, a path for air to continue that suckage until you receive the detail that you were looking for. All right, we're close. We're totally close. I'm gonna turn off the heat, pull it down, vacuum goes on, and look at that, dude. I know that was alarmingly quick, but like, check that, sh that's totally amazing. All right, let's pull this out. That right there, I wished I'd had this device 20 years ago. Seriously, I would have used the living crap out of it. Um, getting your buck back out of a vacuum form, um, is not hard. Uh, it can be hard, but in, for these two parts, it's not going to be that difficult. And they pop right out. And this one too. And there you go. I have these two paper thin replicas of the parts that I started with. And that allows me to make models lighter. It allows me to make many iterations of something I might only have one part of. It allows me places to fit electronics and mechanics that almost no other process would yield a thin part to do. Um, and this is 30 thou. I tend in vacuum forming, like this would be about the thinnest I'd ever try. I don't like working with styrene that's too thin. If you make model airplanes, you probably do work with styrene that's much thinner than this. Um, but I'm gonna do another pull with the 40 thou and with the 60 thou, we'll take a look at the three of them together. I really dig this arrangement for the table. It's a nicely, nicely designed little thing. And it's just clearly what's here is a set screw with a ball detent in it that aligns with that hole or that hole and gives you two different positions. Yeah, it's great. 
I'm happy to say I've just done, uh, over, this, over today I've done several vacuum forms and um, the base is not getting overly hot, which I appreciate. 40 thousandths here, this is my favorite thickness of styrene. 40 thou is my bread and butter thickness. It's, yeah, it's the most versatile to me in terms of its flexibility and its rigidity. It's the best balance. Balance! In general, when you're about to pull a form, it's good to turn off the heating element as you turn on the vacuum so you don't blow your fuse. This thing blows a fuse every time I forget to do that. All right, you can see smoke rising off and we're drooping just a little bit. I think we're doing pretty good. I am going to, uh, yeah, 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 here we go. As soon as the droop drops a little bit more. Okay, here we go. At the very beginning of that form, you might have heard a little pop. That actually was the plastic inside the end of this piece here, pulling in and popping. And that's why I stuck my finger there because this piece hadn't fully drawn to the bottom of those channels. And the moment I put my finger here, the vacuum continued to pull the plastic into that channel. That is. A nice, powerful vacuum. It's a terrific little machine. Let's do the 60 thou. Now this is going to go pretty quickly because the heating element was already warm. Um, and I'm going to kind of ride it to make sure I don't get the plastic too hot. I may actually add a third detent below those first two to give myself a little more adjustability. Yep, see how it's smoking? I don't want it to smoke too much. So now I'm lowering it a little bit to lower the heat. I'm just doing a little more heat adjustment. All right, so I think we're pretty close. Boy, yeah, we're getting a real smoke point, aren't we? Let's do it. Um, heating element off, this down, vacuum pulled. There we go. Wow, wow. Okay, you can color me surprised at the efficacy of this machine. Wow. My mind is kind of blown. Um, on a normal vacuum former, like this one, you would notice a significant difference in the conformity of the vacuum form between a 30 thou and a 60 thou pull. Um, that is to say, the 60 thou is, it's a lot more plastic to have to move into the interstices of the part that I'm molding here and thus I should expect to see my final form be a little bit softer with the thicker plastic because the former has to do more work to conform that plastic around my buck. I'm not seeing that here. I'm actually seeing that the vacuum former is, oh, well, it's a little hard to get this part out. Hold on, that's actually, yeah, come on, come on, there we go, okay. So this is 30 thou, this is 40 thou, this is 60 thou. And I don't know about you, but I can't really see much of a difference. It's a little bit crisper here on the 30 than the 60, but not a lot. Um, they sell plastic for this. I would tend not to buy it because I don't know how to work with their dental plastic with model making. But styrene works beautifully in it, and you can pick this up almost anywhere, black, white. I'm still trying to find colored styrene, but someday. Um, again, I would recommend this for any young model maker, any modeler beginning out, anybody setting up their first shop, anybody who doesn't have a vacuum former and thinks they might need one, man, there's a new sheriff in town and it costs 120 bucks and I'm just blown away by it. I, 
I love this bit of kit. Oh, well, thank you guys for joining me for this tool tip. Oh, I'm so excited about bringing vacuum form to the masses. I mean, it's not me, it's just my recommendation, but get the one of these formers and vacuum form to your heart's content. Thank you guys for joining me. I will see you next time. We didn't just film this vacuum former for this video. We also filmed it in 3D for the Oculus. And you can check it out by following one of the links below to Oculus TV and get a much more immersive experience of just why I love this machine.